Hey, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about generating random and fake data in Python. This has a ton of different applications, such as in games or in different data science applications, but also in being able to build mock APIs or mock applications using fake data. So let's dive right in and get started. So for the first part of this tutorial, we're gonna be focusing on generating random data. And for this, we can use the aptly named built-in library random. So you should be able to run this line of code without any problem. So when we run this, we get access to all of the different functions and utilities that the random library provides. The first thing we'll take a look at is generating a random float. And this is done using the random random function. So when we call this, we can actually see that it generates a random float between zero and one. So every time that we rerun this, we get a different float return. And so what we can actually do too is generate or run this multiple times by using a for loop. So we can say for underscore because we're not really accessing this variable in range five. So we're gonna run this five times, run this line of code, and we can see that we actually get back And we actually get back five different floats all between zero and one. So in some cases, we may actually want to generate random floats between two values. Imagine that you want to be able to generate random sales data. You're not going to want numbers necessarily between zero and one. And in these cases, you'll actually want to generate values between two different values. So for this, we can use the random.uniform function. So this accepts two parameters we can pass in A and B, which represent both the starting and the ending position. So we can pass in say 10 and 100. And when we run this now, we get a float back that's between the value of 10 and 100. Every time we run this similar to the other example, we get back a random float. In some cases, it may not be enough to be able to generate random floats and you'll actually wanna ra randomly generate integers. And for this, we can actually use the randint function. So the way that this works is again, we access the random library and here we pass in randint. Now in this case, we do need to specify a starting and ending uh, parameter here. So we can pass in say again, 10 and 100. And when we run this, we get back a random integer between these two values. Similarly, we can loop over this like we did before to be able to access multiple random values. So we can again say for uh, i in range five, print out this random value. Now, what if we wanted to be able to store these random values in the list? For this, we can actually use a list comprehension. So what we can do is uh, create a list. So we can call this values, for example, and then use a list comprehension here. So we'll call the randint function, uh, and we'll say again between 10 and 100, and we'll just create our loop here. And then when we print out our list values here, we can see that we have five different values, all between 10 and 100. Now, one of the very interesting functions that the random library provides is the ability to generate random integers at different intervals. And so what this means is if we wanted to be able to sample uh, different or generate random integers only at intervals of five or at three between a set of numbers, we can do this. And the way that this actually works is by using the rand range function. And so this accepts the start and the stop parameters like we've been working with before, but it also provides a step parameter. And so this allows us to define what we want that interval to be. So say we wanted to access a random value between zero and 100 with a step of five, meaning that only intervals of five will be considered. Every time that we run this, we get a value that's divisible by five in this case between zero and 100. One of the very cool applications in working with the random library is the ability to create normal distributions. Because the normal distribution is applicable to so many different things, 
being able to create randomized normal distributions is a really powerful mechanism. So the way that this works is actually using the Gauss function. So when we do this, what we can actually do is pass in our uh, mean value as well as our standard deviation. So say we had here uh, a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of three. Every time that we run this, it's going to sample from a distribution where the mean is 10 and the standard deviation is three. So in order to take this a little bit further, let's actually see what this looks like when we sample a thousand different values. So we expect that our distribution is going to have that nice bell curve that a normal distribution has. So the way that we can do this is again by using a list comprehension. So let's call this, for example, normal. And what we're going to do is just sample this and then we can plot this to be able to see whether or not uh, the distribution that this has generated is in fact normal. So in order to plot this, let's import matplotlib pyplot. And what we're going to do here is create a histogram here and pass in our list of values. So we can see here that it's created this nice bell curve mirroring that normal distribution just as we expected. So when you're generating fake data, say for heights or uh, different normally distributed values, this can be an incredible tool in order to be able to simplify that workflow. One of the other things you may want to be able to do is be able to pass in a list of values or a collection of values and be able to choose values randomly from that list. So say we have a list of values here and we're just going to call this say directions and we'll pass in east, west, north, and south. And we want to be able to pick a random value from this. So we can actually use the random.choice function and just pass in our list here. So when we run this, we can see that it picks a value at random here. One of the ways that we can actually expand on this is by choosing values without substitution. So say we have the values from zero to 15. And the way that we can actually do this is by just using the range function here. So we're gonna pass in the range to 16, so it includes the value of 15. So when we run this, we store these in this list object and actually to be safe, we'll just wrap it in a list function. So when we print this out, we can see here that we have the values from zero through 15. So if we wanted to be able to choose values without substitution, meaning that one value can only be chosen once, we can actually use the sample function. So if we pass in sample here and we pass in uh, our list of values here and we pass in a K value, so the K is going to represent how many values we want to choose. So say we pass in the value of five here, this is going to sample five different values from that list without substitution. So we can see here that each value is chosen only once, but they're picked randomly from that list. So once it's picked five, uh, nine, it's no longer able to pick nine a second time. Now, when we're talking about choosing random values, it may seem counterintuitive to be able to reproduce these random results. One of the things that is worth noting about the random uh, library in Python is that it's not actually cryptographically secure. So when you're thinking about cryptography, you'll actually wanna use a different library in order to make your results secure. And so we can demo this by actually seeding different values. And so the way that this works is we can set a random seed here, say to one. And so this means that we're gonna be able to reproduce the results every single time we seed one as our seed. So we can demo this, for example, by calling uh, the random function here. So every single time that we run this, it's gonna generate the exact same result. 
So this can be really helpful when you want to be able to reproduce your results, but it can also not be the best thing when you're trying to create cryptographically secure applications. So let's now dive into a practical example. We're going to create a fake data frame using the random library. So the way that we're going to do this is I've defined a number of different lists here. And so we can sample from these states and different sales types and different street names and street types in order to generate some fake data. So one of the ways in which we can think about doing this, for example, is if we wanted to create a data frame of all of the different sales by their different streets and the number sold and the total sales, is we can use the choice method from here and then be able to generate some random integer and float values to represent street numbers and sales. So if we wanted to create a single row in a data frame, it may actually make sense to define a dictionary of values. So we can call this, for example, values and pass a create a dictionary here. So our key, for example, can be state and then we can choose uh, from that list of states. And then similarly, we can create a sale type key and pass in random dot choice for types. So when we look at this value here, we can see that it's created this random dictionary here based on the parameters that we've defined. So what we now want to do is be able to loop over this many different times. So what we can do, for example, now is turn this piece here into a function. So what we can do is create this function up here called generate values. And it's just going to return this dictionary here. So when we want to create a bunch of different fake data, we can, for example, create a list comprehension here that just calls this function, uh, say 500 times. And then because we've created this as a dictionary, we can actually load this into a pandas data frame really easily. So let's go ahead and import pandas first. And then we're going to load that in using the constructor and just pass in our sales here. And then when we print out the head of this, we can see that it's actually created this nicely formatted data frame with 500 different values based on the different parameters that we've defined up here. Now, in many cases, when you're wanting to create mock data, it can be a little cumbersome to be able to define the different states, the different sale types, street names. And when we start thinking about phone numbers and email addresses, this gets really, really complicated. But being able to work with uh, really meaningful mock data can really make your application testing more successful. And this is where third party packages like Faker come into play. Faker isn't installed by default, but we can install it using the pip installer. So when we run this, we can actually download the Faker library. So what we want to do once this has been installed is actually import the Faker class. So we're going to say uh, from Faker import Faker with a capital F. And this is going to give us access to be able to create different fake attributes. So when we import this, we're going to instantiate this class by calling it fake. So now this fake object actually has access to all of the different uh, attributes and methods of that faker class. So for example, what we can take a look at is all of the different pieces that we get access to here. So we can see that we have different centuries, catchphrases, building numbers, booleans. Uh, but one of the very interesting things here, for example, is the name. And so what we can do here is print this out uh, and we need to actually call the method. And we can see that we get different names generated every single time that we call this. You can also see that we had uh, a female name that we could generate and this is only going to generate female sounding names. And so we can already see the utility of this, 
by being able to access different pieces. So for example, if we wanted to access cities, we can generate these randomly generated city names without needing to define them and then choosing from a list. It gets even more powerful when we start thinking about street addresses. So in this case, it actually generates real like or real looking street addresses for us. Where this package gets much more interesting is the ability to define different locales. So in this case, all of the different pieces that we've looked at have looked very American or English sounding. So say we wanted to have users that looked both American and German, we can define a locale list. And so we can pass in here our original American locale, but we can also pass in this German locale. And then we're going to create a new uh, faker object here. And we're just going to pass in our locale list here. And so now that we have access to this object here, we can actually repeat some of our earlier examples, say by accessing the name. And so in this case, it's not just going to generate English sounding names, but also German sounding names. So when we run this, we can see that we get a much better variety of names. So let's go ahead and take a look at another practical example of creating a data frame using the Faker class. So this will look a lot like our previous example where we generate a dictionary and then loop over that dictionary and create a data frame out of it. So we're going to generate this new function here and we're going to call this generate person. And so a So at this point, we can just generate our list of values again. So we're just going to call this function in our list comprehension. And then we're just going to pass this directly into a data frame. So we're going to call our data frame people and we're going to use the constructor and just pass in values. So now you can see how quickly that ran as well. When we print out our data frame, we can see that we have a hundred rows generated, each with different locale type data. So for example, here we have the German prefix for Mr. But then we also have different jobs based on these locales. So this is a really, really great way in order to be able to generate fake mock data for different APIs that you may be testing or applications that you're building. So I hope you learned a lot in this tutorial. It was a lot of fun to put together. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet subscribed, consider subscribing and hitting the little bell icon to be notified of when I release new videos just like this one. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.